So I absolutely love Thingiverse. There are so many cool things on there that people design and they give away for free and I think that is so cool. Unfortunately, a lot of times when I download things and I actually print them, they're not exactly what I need. Maybe they designed it for a slightly different version of a product and a hole will be off or there'll be something that I wanna do that's a little bit different. And up until a few days ago, I was pretty much stuck. But even though I have no artistic ability and no CAD ability, I learned how to remix in just a couple of minutes and I'm going to show you some of the very basics so that you're not stuck like I was. So all you need to do is head over to tinkercad.com, create an account, and tell it that you want to create a new 3D project. Download whatever you want from Thingiverse and hit this import button. You just have to drag your file in and hit import and give it a minute. And voila, your object will show up on the screen. Now, I'm not going to do a full Tinkercad tutorial. And in fact, I'm going to link in the description to a 10 minute tutorial that will show you pretty much everything you need to know. Uh, I'll go ahead and start off by saying one of the first things you're gonna struggle with a little bit is just kind of moving around. I'm using a mouse. So when I right click and start dragging, it allows me to rotate the entire field of view. Um, if you're not right clicking and you drag, you're moving the actual device around and you'll just kind of have to tinker with it a little bit. Get it, tinker. Um, um, but you will figure it out soon enough. So I know this is a profound statement, but if you're tinkering on Tinkercad, I'm assuming that you most likely want to add something, move something, or possibly remove something. So uh, I'm gonna give you some of the very basics. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that I wanna put two LEDs up here. So um, when you look at these tools over on the side here, they are either solid or a hole. And so solid will add to your unit and a hole will remove from it. So because an LED is round, I'm gonna go ahead and pick the cylinder and I'm just gonna drag it in here. Um, now, one of the things you can do is you can start clicking on these little corner things here and you can start dragging things around. Now, if you hold shift, it'll kind of maintain its shape, which is usually what you want. Um, I find on stuff like this, like I know that I need an eight millimeter hole. So I find that rather than dragging, a lot of times it is easier to just type it in there what you want. Now, the next thing that's gonna be a little weird is sort of manipulating these objects, just like moving around the screen. So I've right clicked and I'm dragging around and now I'm gonna hit this little thing here. And again, same thing. A lot of times I find that it's easier to just type in that I wanna turn that thing 90 degrees and now all of a sudden my hole is 90 degrees. And then the next step is, as you can see, when you hover over things, you have this thing that looks kinda of like a little cone here. And as you drag it up, um, that's lifting it up off the plane. So as you can see here, we have our hole, but it is not touching the actual unit. Now we could make it longer and just extend it the whole way through. And that's actually what I do most of the time. But if you drag it over here, you'll see that um, you drag this hole and it all of a sudden starts protruding through on this side. And I'll come over on here and you can see the hole is clearly going through both places. So now what I can do is I can click on this hole and I can actually use the arrow keys to move it over exactly where I want it. And then let's just say that I want to have a second one. I'm going to control C, control V. And then this is when the arrow keys are really handy to have for alignment. Now I've got two holes and they are both protruding through and that's just a perfect place to put my LEDs. Um, now if I want to make that a permanent part or not permanent but if I want to bind that to the object I just select everything here and hit this little button to group it and now um, you can see a lot better that those are two holes that are basically lined up in my object. Now let's say that because I have my two holes up here that I don't actually need this LED hole anymore. So I'm going to drag in a solid block. And um, now as you can look over here on the side, I have uh, something that's a different color and you can actually change the colors if you want to, uh, whatever you think is kind of the most visible for where you're at. But I like the red, I think that's gonna stick out really well. Now one of the things that's interesting is I don't have to perfectly plug that hole. So I can come in here and start manipulating the shape and all that and I can actually go way taller um, than the LED just to make sure that it fits. So I'm gonna just start getting my perspective right and I'm gonna slide it over here and I'm gonna start sliding it back and then I'm gonna lift it up here and just make sure that what I'm doing is actually covering the hole. So you're gonna right click and drag around. You see, hey, maybe it's a little narrow there. So I'm gonna drag it over here a little bit, make it a little wider and uh, just kind of play with it until you get it where you want it there. Make sure I'm not covering those holes. So then you kind of look around and you can see actually I'm floating a little high. So I'm going to drag this down here and uh, we're just going to keep looking around at it and make sure it's good. Now, one of the things we can do is turn it this way and then we can start just jamming it right in there. Um, so now you can see, you can look around and make sure you don't see any of the hole that you had before. And now 
all you have to do is come in here and it's it's a little awkward and I'm sure there's better ways to do this but you can start dragging this in here until it just meets flush with the original thing and you can see I got it a little small there so I'm gonna drag it over here and uh, bam that looks pretty good we'll make sure we're not back a little bit we might be back a little bit and we're gonna do the same thing over here we're just gonna make it meet flush and there we go and just kind of look at it if you uh, scroll in with your zoom wheel or with your uh, mouse wheel you can get closer and I think I'm pretty good there now this is one of those times where you can actually go ahead and do the same thing you can select this and so I can select the actual outside and select the inside here and uh, group those together and then now you can see mm, see I missed just a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and control Z and I'm gonna make this just move over just a little bit here and then I'm going to hold shift again and I'm gonna bind them together and now aha it disappeared and as you look over here you can see a little bit of a line I think that's more telling you that the object is there than the fact that it's gonna stick out but as you move around it looks like my hole is gone and of course I still have my holes up here so I have to admit that I've always been afraid of doing this kind of stuff in CAD, but it's actually really easy. They give you all sorts of different things in here that you can play around with. You can play around with text and shape and adding and removing. And I'm going to link to another tutorial, as I said. Uh, you can take these things and move them for your needs and all that kind of stuff. Um, I will give you one pro tip. One of the things that I think is such a problem is that people design things to such tight tolerances. You know, theirs is 1.27 millimeters, and they make this little SD card slot 1.27 millimeters. Like, make it one and a half you know give yourself a little bit of room for your 3d printer to be off for one board to be slightly different than another one um, that's just a huge problem on Thingiverse with people just making things to such tight tolerances but once you get it the way you want it um, it does auto save so I can come over here and I can say Fred uh, we'll just call this V I'm gonna call this V0 because I don't actually want to use this one and then uh, you hit the export button and you can save it as an STL file and you can just put it in Cura and print it away. And then if you want to, you can re-upload it up to Thingiverse, give the original person credit, and uh, yeah, you are good to go. So I wanna thank you guys for watching this. And again, there's some links in the description to this kind of stuff and maybe a few other tools that you might want, but uh, have a great day.